Hi, it's Chase from Furball Fables, and I'm here with another Cole and Marmalade legal update for you. This is update five, and we're just going to cover a few things that I haven't been able to cover in the other uh, updates. If you haven't seen the other four updates, we'll put a card here and then there'll be a link in the description and at the end of this video. First thing I want to mention is defendant's demand for a jury trial. So they have asked for a jury trial in this federal court, so that's going to be very interesting. Chris Poole applied for a trademark for Catman Chris at the end of last year. So it looks like this trademark has gone through. A certificate of interested persons and in corporate disclosure statements has been released. So this is obviously a list of people that are going to be part of the case. You know, all of them are people that we know. They've added Holden 2 here. They've also named Madi Ramos of Catitude Daily and at one time was part of I Heart Cats. And what's interesting about that is that in Catitude Daily, uh, the trademark for that is owned by Horse Life Media, and Horse Life Media is owned by Steve and Ed. Madi has been mentioned a number of times in the documents. There's a series of emails about this, and uh, here's one from Chris. First question is, are we actually paying Madi and Amber? If so, this was never discussed. We know that they were both writing for the website. Chris seems to be unaware that they uh, were paying them back in November, that they both apparently were not on the DPM payroll. They were considered staff of Holden 2. Now, after Chris and Jessica were terminated, I believe that um, Madi, and I'm not sure about Amber, was, was writing all of the content or repurposing her own content from Catified Daily uh, for the Cola Marmalade website. And we can see there's a check here uh, from January that she was paid $2,500 in the beginning of January, but we don't know what she was paid after that to repurpose or write that content. Uh, so it'd be very interesting to see what she has to say when she she is called into court. The other thing that is worth mentioning here is that uh, Steve Waters and Ed Holden have another LLC called Holden 2. Actually, there's actually two Holden 2s, which this makes this is very confusing, but I'll do my best to explain it because it is a big part of this case and what I want to talk about next. So there is a Holden 2 in Florida and there is a Holden 2 in Chicago. This makes a little bit of sense to me because Ed lives in Chicago and Steve lives in Florida. The rest of it doesn't make any sense. Apparently, Holden 2 was the, ma the management company that was managing digital pet media unbeknownst to Chris. So Chris did not know anything about this company when he was terminated from what he thought was Digital Pet Media, he found out that he actually was working for another company called Holden 2. So there's a document called the Motion to Compel Production of Documents uh, and Sanctions. And basically what this document is about is all the documents and documentation, etc., that Chris's counsel has asked Digital Pet Media for. Now we've seen this list. I'll show it again here on the screen. This came from Stephen Waters, and these are all of the various things that they say uh Holden 2 provided for digital pet media, but Chris had no idea how much he was paying for any of these services. There was no documentation. He was unaware of it uh, until he saw this list. And so he started questioning them in a series of emails asking if they could please break it down for him. So in this document of a motion to compel, I'm not going to go over the whole thing because it's very repetitive. Basically, Chris's counsel is requesting all the documents that they would need for this case from Digital Pet Media. And Digital Pet Media, for the most part, and I'll show some of them on the screen, and you can always stop this video and, you know, look at these documents. Sometimes I go by them pretty quickly, but I, I try to show them to you. So if you want to stop and look and read what they say verbatim, they're there on the screen for you. Uh, Digital Pet Media objected to just about every every one of these requests 
whenever they would ask for information from Holden 2, which was a managing company, DPM objects to the request. Holden 2 LLC is a separate entity and non-party to this instant litigation. DPM is not in position to produce another entity's confidential business information. So they say this time and time again in this document. And of course, we all know that that Steve and Ed own Holden 2 LLC, both of them, the both. Digital Pit Media objected to every request in the defense first request for production. Out of the 31 requests, the plaintiff objected to relevance in 28 requests, overbroad in 19 requests, and not reasonably calculated in 29 requests. However, they have failed to state reasoning for these objections. Baselessness of these objections outlined above show that these objections were not made in good faith, that they had merit. The objections instead show the objections were instead used to delay discovery. The bad faith of Digital Pet Media and its counsel mandates sanctions. Okay, up next is a video about the money. I think you guys are going to be really interested in looking at this. We'll probably release it in the next few days. So thanks again for watching. Thanks so much for supporting Furball Fables. Uh, we're, th we're really thrilled to know you all. Uh, it's been an amazing experience for me to interact with you all in the comments. You are definitely a smart bunch. I really appreciate your thoughts. Uh, you make me laugh. You are horrified like I am. I'm sure uh, if Chris and Jess are looking at these comments, they must really be touched by all your love. So thank you so much and see you again in another couple days.